Rival Palestinian factions agree on terms for holding elections. So will the first presidential and legislative vote in 15 years finally go ahead? And how will Palestinian reconciliation affect attempts to find peace with Israel? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Kim Vanell. Fourteen Palestinian factions appear to have put aside some of their differences, opening the way for elections to be held. The agreement includes the main rivals, Fatah and Hamas. And there's been reached after talks in Egypt's capital, Cairo. The two sides have been fighting since Hamas won parliamentary elections in 2006 and held power in the Gaza Strip a year after. There have been repeated attempts to hold elections in the past few years, and if these go ahead, they'll be the first in 15 years. The parliamentary and presidential votes are now set to take place in May and July, respectively. Nita Ibrahim reports from Ramallah in the occupied West Bank. This could be the first benefit for Palestinians following talks between Fatah and Hamas in Cairo. Egypt indefinitely opening its Rafah border crossing with the Gaza Strip. The crossing is the only passage to the outside world for Gaza that is not controlled by Israel. The Egyptian authorities closed it in 2014, citing security concerns, and have sometimes reopened it mainly for humanitarian reasons. Despite the decision, Palestinians say it's not easy to make the crossing. I haven't seen my family or my two daughters in two years. I thought this could lead to an opportunity to visit them, but we haven't seen relaxed measures. The number of people allowed in is very low. Hundreds of Palestinians crossed into Egypt on Wednesday, and thousands more are waiting for their turn. While many feel relieved, they're still worried. A journey that usually takes several hours has been taking days because of Egyptian checkpoints. The Palestinian factions meeting in Cairo say their road to reconciliation has been made shorter. Hamas won the 2006 parliamentary elections and formed a national unity government with Fatah, but they clashed over power in 2007, creating the deepest Palestinian division. This time, they've agreed to hold elections as a step towards ending their divisions in the future. The split is permanent. Hamas is going to continue uh, in control of Gaza. Fatah is in control of the West Bank. And there is a power sharing. But having a legislative council is the first step of a future reconciliation. Several unity agreements have been signed in the past decade, but none ended the 14-year division. Many Palestinians are skeptical. Many people fear the scenarios of previous elections will be repeated. They fear the results won't be respected and power won't be shared. People we spoke to here fear that the elections that they've been waiting so long for will only keep the same people in power and that by avoiding resolving their main differences, they're keeping them alive. Nida Ibrahim, Al Jazeera, the Occupied West Bank. In a joint statement at the end of the two-day summit in Cairo, Palestinian factions pledged to abide by the timetable for the long-delayed vote and accept the results. An election court will be set up to monitor the process and resolve any disputes. It will include judges from the West Bank, Gaza and East Jerusalem. Uniformed Palestinian police officers will guard voting sites in the West Bank and Gaza. The two groups also agreed to allow unrestricted campaigning and to release political detainees held in the West Bank and Gaza. Let's now bring in our guests in Ramallah. We have Mustafa Baghouti, a Palestinian politician and Secretary General of the Palestinian National Initiative. And Rehovot of Kasif is Knesset member representing the Hadash movement. And in Chicago, Ali Abu Nima is co-founder of the Electronic Intifada and author of the Battle for Justice in Palestine. A very warm welcome to you all. Thank you for joining us here on Al Jazeera's Inside Story. I'd like to begin with you, Ali Abu Nima. This is not the first time that we've been told uh, that Palestinian elections are going ahead. It all sounds great. Everything I just read out there sounds great. Everything that's been agreed to. 
Do you think these elections that are being planned out now will actually go ahead? I don't know if they'll go ahead. There's plenty of reasons to think they might not go ahead. But even if they do, I wouldn't uh, argue that they are uh, necessarily a great thing. Um, as your report noted, there were elections held in 2006, which the Hamas-affiliated list won. The problem was that uh, Mahmoud Abbas and Fatah did not uh, recognize the res result. And they aligned with Israel, the United States, and various Arab regimes to overturn the result and to um, isolate uh, Hamas and created, in fact, the disastrous split that we're living in now. So I don't know why Hamas would trust the same people, the same Mahmoud Abbas and the same Fatah and the same so-called international community to respect an election result now. The bigger question, though, is, is what do elections mean for a people under occupation? Uh, it's a fiction that they're electing a government. Uh, Palestinians don't have a, a state. They don't have a government. The so-called Palestinian Authority is not free to do anything. Um, the only thing it exists to do is to collaborate with Israel on so-called security coordination. And that's why we see the Europeans and others uh, being excited about the prospect of elections, because for mm -hmm. them, they think it's a way to uh, renew the legitimacy of the Palestinian Authority, which exists for the purpose of maintaining Israeli occupation and control Mm -hmm. uh, really just a Palestinian Bantistan. So okay. nothing has been resolved since the 2006 coup by Mahmoud Abbas against the previous election result. Okay. So I, I have no idea why Hamas would uh, think it can be trusted you, now. you raised a lot of good points. We're going to get on to uh, the PA and the role of the PLO a little later. Uh, I'd like to bring you in, Mustafa Barghouti. That was a very dire assessment we just heard. You were actually part of this meeting in Cairo, which got us to this point. You must be, therefore, pretty confident that these elections are going to go ahead and that they're a very good thing. Well, I wish I could say I'm 100% confident, but I would say that a major obstacle has been removed from conducting the elections. And while I do agree that the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank and in Gaza really exists under Israeli occupation and is so tight, uh, tightly controlled by the so-called Oslo agreements, which we, we demanded in, uh, in Cairo that it would not be a reference for these elections, Regardless of all of that, this authority is controlling people's lives, too. It is, uh, it is collecting the taxes of Palestinians. 90% of the Palestinian budget is from Palestinian taxes that Palestinians pay, contrary to what people believe that it is foreign donations. And uh, the, the, this government decides how much goes, goes for health, who gets vaccinated now, uh, how is the health insurance system here, so it, it, it is in control of certain things that affect daily life of Palestinians. So a change, a democratic change in this regard is very much important without, uh, without forgetting that the struggle to end occupation and the system of apartheid should continue. OK, but coming back to my original question, coming back to my original question, we've heard before that Palestinian elections were going to go ahead. We've heard before talk of reconciliation. What is different this time? Well, it will be different if what we decided in Cairo will be implemented. And we spoke about three major issues. One is that elections should not be a substitute to resolving the internal Palestinian division. So uh, there were decisions made to go forward with ending the internal division, including forming a national unity government after elections. We would have preferred to have it before, of course. The second issue was the issue of freedoms. Because so far, uh, the freedoms are so much controlled. And uh, the main, uh, there was a major issue of, uh, in, in the resolution about freedom of expression, freedom of political activity, ending any form of political arrest, including arresting people based on the electronic, uh, what they call uh, uh, social media crimes and so on, which was used really to suppress freedom of expression of Palestinians. Mm -hmm. in the West Bank, and other forms of suppression happened in Gaza. So a major challenge would be 
that our resolution that was taken in Cairo would be implemented by the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank and Gaza. Okay, so it's another all about was, it's all another, about implementation. I want to come back to you Sorry. in a moment. I want to come back to you in a moment. First, I, I need to go to Ofer okay. Kassif. Um, how do you think Israel will be viewing these developments? Uh, look, I think that uh, my view is a kind of a combination between the views that uh, uh, the two gentlemen uh, presented before. Uh, I think that there are signs, but not more than that, there are signs of democracy in those elections, assuming they will be taking place. Now, I mean signs or, uh, because uh, there are also signs, but, all, but just signs, not more than that, of sovereignty of the Palestinian people. I, as a supporter of Palestinian sovereignty over the all Palestinian occupied territories, I think that they, on the one hand, there's a good thing, and I welcome the elections because, as I said, they are signs of sovereignty and democracy. But as we all know, democracy is not only a procedure of elections. Democracy is also substantial uh, idea and substantial practice of people's sovereignty. Now, unfortunately, the Palestinian people are not sovereign. They are still under the Israeli occupation. In that sense, and here I agree with uh, Mr. Barghouti, here there is a huge problem. Israel is still the occupier. Israel is the colonizer. And Israel still doesn't allow the Palestinian people to pursue its own sovereign, independent lives. So would Israel even allow Israel elections to go allow. ahead fully? Would, would Israel allow elections to go ahead fully? By definition, no. By definition, no, because there is an occupation. So if there is an occupation, it's clear. And, the, and of course, the people don't vote for the occupier. Then they vote for uh, the Palestinian Authority. And as, as I said before, there are good signs in those elections because they are signs of sovereignty and future mm -hmm. independence. Okay. But still, as long as the Israeli occupation goes on, the Palestinians are not truly free. And as long as they are not truly free, we cannot speak literally mm -hmm. about full-fledged democracy. Okay. Ali... That's the problem. And Israel doesn't allow. So those elections, I, I wouldn't say that those elections are totally sham, mm -hmm. but those elections are far from being true democratic because they are might, might be procedurally democratic, but not substantially. Happening under an occupation. Ali Abu Nima, can you help us to zoom out, give us the context here? Why is this uh, announcement happening now between Fatah and Hamas? Why, why is all of, all of this happening now? Well, I think we have to uh, go back to the issue that uh, Dr. Mustafa Barghouti raised of, of so-called national reconciliation and national unity. And, you know, there's this narrative that there's this split between Hamas and Fatah, and why can't they just get along? And there needs to be a focus on why this split exists in the first place. The fundamental split and why it has existed and persists is because on the one side you have Mahmoud Abbas and Fatah and the uh, internationally supported Palestinian Authority in the West Bank who believe in collaboration with the Israeli occupation. This is called security coordination, where the Palestinian Authority uh, which people would presumably be voting for, works closely with the Israeli army, works with the Shin Bet, the Israeli se secret police, helps to put Palestinians in prison uh, on the one hand. And on the other side, you have Hamas, which supports resistance. And in fact, its military wing, as, as we know, has fought three wars with Israel in the past decade uh, and in the years since the 2006 election. So the basis for national unity has to be, it can't be, uh, uh, you know, one side collaborates and the other side resists. Unity means either Mahmoud Abbas has to give up collaboration with the Israeli military occupation or Hamas has to give up resistance. And since so far, uh, neither has been willing to budge. Mahmoud Abbas is totally committed to collaboration and Hamas remains committed to resistance. There can be no unity and there can be no 
papering over these cracks. That's why we've seen over the years, I can't, I, I don't know how many so-called reconciliation agreements and meetings in Cairo and announcements, and they all fall apart because of this fundamental split that mm -hmm. people uh, think think can just be made to disappear. Mm -hmm. So the question is, since we know that Mahmoud Abbas was absolutely committed to collaboration with Israel, the question is, has Hamas's political leadership given up on the idea of resistance and decided to join Mahmoud Abbas in a coalition? And the other okay. point I, I just want to make in, in relation to the agreement in Cairo that Dr. Barghouti talked about is it's not up to Palestinians to guarantee whether the elections are free or fair, because as noted, this is under occupation, and Israel uh, defines virtually every Palestinian political party as a terrorist organization. And right now, there are members of the, the last Palestinian Legislative, Co Legislative Council that was elected in 2006, like uh, uh, Khaled Jarrar, who are in Israeli prisons. So Israel will not respect, well, Israel will only respect the result of the election if it gets the result which it wants, which is the perpetuation of Mahmoud Abbas and his collaborationist regime. Okay. It will not allow a result mm -hmm. that does not meet its requirements, and nor will the so-called international community. If Hamas wins again, the EU will immediately uh, stop its funding, so will the Biden administration and all the rest. So let's not pretend that Palestinians really have any choice. The only thing they're being asked to do is to elect a Palestinian authority that can continue to collaborate with Israel against their rights. OK, and I need no to interrupt because I need to make sure no that we have a spread and right. a spread evenly discussion. Yeah. You made a number of very good points. I'd like to come back to you, Mustafa Barghouti, uh, just on one of the points uh, that we just heard there, talking about either it's Hamas is giving up resistance or Abbas is giving up cooperation with Israel. That's the only way that this can go forward. What's your take? Well, in my opinion, of course, there is a difference between Hamas and Fatah on the issue of the type of struggle that should be conducted and the type of relationship with the Israeli occupation. But uh, increasingly during the last years, Hamas also became an authority in Gaza Strip, which is under Israeli siege. While the PA, the Fatah, is under Israeli occupation in the West Bank. In my opinion, during the last years, the struggle was concentrating more about a struggle over an authority, which is under occupation. So that basically is the side of why the two sides are even getting close to declaring that they will run a unified list in the coming elections, mm -hmm. a unified Fatah Hamas list, which means what? It means they are ready. To, to, to get together to reconcile the issue of dividing the authority between themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a major change and a major development. But we should also note the following. Does the Palestinian people have the right to choose its leadership? We are not only talking about the leadership of the authority. We are also talking about the leadership of the PLO. And part of this agreement that was concluded in Cairo is that there should be elections of the Palestinian National Council. And one thing that we don't want to see is a formation, a formation of another quota system where the Palestinian political groups and parties divide the seats between themselves without giving the people, the public, the right to choose. I think the Palestinian public has been deprived for a very long time from the right of choosing their leaders, whether in the PLO or uh, in the Palestinian Authority. And that is the aspect that we should care about and we should concentrate on and struggle for. Uh, one more issue I have to mention here is that uh, some of the changes that were made in Cairo are very important if they are implemented, because we demanded that the law is changed to give an opportunity for younger generation. Mm -hmm. uh, our proposal was to bring down the age of uh, ability to run to 21. We demanded that the rate that the women will have at least a quota of 30 percent in the seats of the parliament, which mm -hmm. is very important in comparison to what we have today. But the big question would remain what Israel will do. We, we expect that Israel will try to obstruct elections in Jerusalem and maybe in Area C. 
That's why we see these elections should go in the direction of becoming one form of popular nonviolent resistance against Israel. Okay. And insisting on having elections despite Israeli decisions. The mm -hmm. other big question quickly is what the international community will do. Will they again repeat what they've done in 2006, as was mentioned? Well, this would not be acceptable. Mm. The world community has to respect the will and decision of the Palestinian people, whoever they choose. Yeah. I want to bring a, pick up that point and uh, put it to you, Offa Kassif. Uh, as we've heard and talked about a few times now, it was the US uh, that supported attempts to push uh, Hamas out of Gaza. So, uh, yes, Hamas out of Gaza after it won elections in 2006. It's been very involved in Palestinian affairs, to say the least. So what will the Biden administration be thinking now when it looks at the developments that are happening between the Palestinian sides? Is the US going to get involved again? Could the US in some way deal with Hamas? First of all, uh, unfortunately, we know that uh, what I prefer to refer to as the American imperialism rather than solely the American uh, administration, we know that the American imperialism has been involved throughout the globe, and including in the, in the, in the Middle East, and uh, has always uh, tried to pursue its, as it were, own interests. So it's not a matter of uh, driving out one force or another. The main question is if we want at all to uh, uh, the intervention of the United States. And I personally object it. I don't want to be any, to see any intervention by the United States because we all know that the United States has always been biased in favor of Israel. Israel is the occupier. I want to mention two things that are very important, although are not directly related to the elections, but I think that uh, indirectly they are. One is the nation, nation state bill, the uh, uh, basic law that the Israeli Knesset has enacted a few years ago, which actually turned Israel into an apartheid state. This is one thing. The second is the policy practically speaking, of the Israeli government under Netanyahu, especially in the last five years or so, uh, that actually has been pursuing an ethnic cleansing in the occupied Palestinian territories. So in that sense, Israel, as I said before, but now I said it even more bluntly, that we, uh, given the uh, apartheid nation state bill and the practice of ethnic cleansing, the Palestinians now are under a serious threat even more than before. Mm -hmm. And under such a threat, the elections, and that's the main question in our view, the elections, the question is whether the elections are going to change the attitude of Israel, mm -hmm. whether those elections may change something that will move the Israeli government, and of course the election in Israel are too uh, very important, but, but uh, since we are talking or concentrating on the question of the uh, uh, elections uh, uh, within the Palestinian, for the Palestinian Authority, mm -hmm. so I will focus on that too. The question is whether those elections are going to free the Palestinians from the terrible mm -hmm. occupation, apartheid, ethnic cleansing that Israel has been pursuing. One thing I think That's we the haven't. Main question. One thing I think United we haven't States covered is yet. Not the solution. And we can't. The United States we, is part of the problem. I, I hear what you're saying. We're, we're running so, out of time. But one thing that I, th I think we have to ask, uh, and I'd like to put to you, Ali Abu Nima, how do Palestinians actually feel about the concept of elections? Do they feel like Palestinian politicians can actually represent them? I mean, Mahmoud Abbas is, is, I believe, 85 years old. Does he represent or can he represent a very young population who have you know, many things that they want answered by their politicians? Well, that's a very good question. We have to remember that even if these uh, elections go ahead, they exclude the vast majority of the Palestinian people. Remember, the Palestinian people is not just the residents of the West Bank and Gaza Strip, but the millions of Palestinians forcibly exiled from their homeland by Israel solely on the racist grounds that they're not Jewish. So I know that the Cairo uh, document that Dr. Barghouti mentioned says there should be elections for the Palestine National Council. But the reality is that that has never happened before. And you'd have to overcome the practicality of 
um, holding elections for Palestinian refugees in Jordan, uh, in Syria, in Lebanon, in other countries, where this, this has just been unprecedented, and I doubt it would be permitted to happen. Mm -hmm. So even if they agree, agree to that on paper, the elections in the West Bank and Gaza would not produce uh, a legitimate leadership for the whole Palestinian people. Okay. And if Hamas and Fatah run together, they don't even give the people of, of the West Bank and Gaza Strip any sort of meaningful choice. I think mm -hmm. we should stop kidding ourselves that under a, a, a brutal military occupation, an apartheid regime like Israel, that we can have elections any more than black South Africans could have had valid elections under Bantustan conditions. Okay, we're we going to have to leave it there for time. My sincerest lesson. apologies. We have run out of time. A big thank you to all of our guests, Mustafa Barghouti, Ofa Kasif and Ali Abu Nima. Thank you. And thank you too for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Kim Vanell, and from the whole team here. Bye-bye for now.